Hi, Shani Fannies. Welcome to Educating Shani. I'm Shani, and I'm recovering from eating disorder. Hi. Before I get into this video, I just want to say that I'm not a doctor. I'm not a therapist. I have no medical training whatsoever. I just want to share with you my experience of OCD and I want you guys to also share your experiences in the comments so we can all connect and find some other people that are going through similar things as you and that's what this whole community is about. So please like blow up the comments with comments about this if you have questions about it, if you have OCD and you have anything that you want to contribute to this video, put it in the comments. Um, but I'm just going to be sharing with you my experience. And then I'm also going to be reacting to a video of a friend of mine. If she would send it to me already, I'm going to have to do it tomorrow because I think she went to bed and she hasn't sent it to me yet. So I'm going to have to film it tomorrow. I'll, I'll insert it in. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Shani and I have many mental illnesses and physical illnesses and eating disorders. And I started this channel to bring awareness to all of that. I'm here to try and make it not so taboo to talk about that stuff. Like I know it's really uncomfortable, but I like to talk about everything and anything. So if you're new around here, welcome. I lost all my teeth to my eating disorder. And I took you through my whole journey of that in the beginning of this channel, if you'd like to go check it out. But let's get into today's video. As you can tell from the title, we're gonna be talking about OCD today, obsessive compulsive disorder. Now, before I talk about mine specifically, I'm gonna read the definition, because again, not a doctor, not a therapist. I just have like a lot of experience with the actual disorder, so. So OCD is obsessive compulsive disorder. Having a tendency towards excessive order lines, perfectionism, and great attention to detail. A lot of people think that OCD is just about being clean, and for some people it is, but there are many different forms of OCD. There are the kinds where you actually have to have your house too messy, or else you feel out of place. It's, I know it's bizarre, or like you hurt yourself, like Colleen Ballinger is going through an OCD where she picks at her skin when she's anxious and she's really kind of, and she was diagnosed with OCD about it and she's always like hurting and bleeding and it's just really sad. Um, so OCD can come in many forms. Mine in particular, I'm gonna share, you with my, share with you my story, um, is kind of more along the lines of germs. Um, I am, I would consider myself recovered now from my OCD. Uh, I mean, sometimes it still comes here and there, but like it used to just completely control my life. Here, let me tell you what I'm talking about. I will say that for me here and there, I have obsessed about needing my house to be messy and somehow I felt safer, I felt calmer if there was a mess in my house, hence my house. Um, we've all seen it in the decluttering series, and yes, I'm going to continue that, so stay tuned. But some, sometimes I just felt more comfortable in clutter, and I don't, I don't know how else to explain it except it just made me feel safe. Uh, the other biggest thing for me was washing my hands and sanitizing my hands all day long. I probably sanitize my hands at least a hundred times a day. Same with washing my hands. It used, and it got to the point where my skin would just crack and dry and be red and. You can still sort of see the scar from the burn. You can see how this is slightly lighter than this. So like from here up, I would have like constant burns from sanitizer. And my, my fingers would crack, my knuckles would crack, I'd be bleeding, it would be painful. I would have to add more sanitizer because I couldn't stop sanitizing. So the sanitizer on the little cuts that I would get was just excruciating, but I couldn't help it. Like I had to, I had to sanitize constantly. One of the biggest ways that it affected me was that I would not allow anything on my bed unless it had been disinfected. So I'm in bed a lot, we all know this, welcome to my life. I've got a lot of health problems and so I'm in bed a lot and back, I don't know, like maybe 10 years ago, I went through this phase for a couple of years, I think, where if, if, if I was gonna eat anything in bed, it needed to be sanitized, so let me explain. It's so like, if I were to eat a banana in bread, I would need to take a banana, sanitize the outside of the banana with hand sanitizer before I let it touch my bed. Or I was really obsessed with beef jerky, so I'd buy bags of beef jerky and I had to sanitize the bags before I even let them near my bed. Um, same with like candy wrappers and other food items and I had to make sure that the, the, I, I would only eat off of paper and plastic because I thought that was the cleanest. 
Like that was kind of bizarre to be honest. And thinking back now, I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. But I don't know what it is. My bed, it's like my bed was my safe space. And so there could be no bacteria. There could be no germs in my bed. Like I was like deathly afraid of them. So that was a big thing for me. Another thing I was oddly, well, not odd, but like deathly afraid of was spiders. And I don't know if I want to, if this should be counted as OCD, but I feel like it should because OCD is doing something compulsively and something that affects you compulsively. Um, and for me, every if I saw a spider in my room, I would obviously have Danny kill it and then I wouldn't be able to go in my room for at least four hours. Don't know why, I just, I needed, in my mind, four hours was the least amount of time um, that I could spend outside of my bedroom, so. Back to the spider thing, okay. So spiders were not only like scary to me and poisonous and have the potential to kill me. I literally thought that every single spider, even if it was a little house spider, was gonna murder me. Like I was convinced. But not, not only was I scared of them for that reason, but I, in my mind, had it that they carry a lot of bacteria for some reason. Um, I don't know why. Like other bugs, I didn't feel that way. Just spiders, I felt like had like, maybe because they're a little bit furry, maybe I thought somehow that there was like more dust collected and more germs. I don't know why, there's absolutely no explanation. So what I would do is I would line my doorway, my bedroom door doorway with traps, like the glue traps that you use to catch spiders or mice or whatever, and I just would line the floor. And it worked most of the time, as you can see from these pictures. Uh, that like. We definitely caught a lot of spiders doing it this way, but most of the time I had to make sure that Danny would go and take care of it because I couldn't even look at it or else I would be scarred for at least four hours before I could go back into my bedroom. So it would freak me out the most if the spider, if you can see that it looks like the spider is leaving my room instead of entering my room on the glue traps, that would freak me out and then I couldn't go in there for days until Danny went in and checked everywhere for spiders. Like that's how bad it got. It was really, really bad. Another thing when I was a teenager, I forgot to mention, I was obsessed with having perfect hair and perfect makeup. That might surprise some of you because I don't really give a crap about that stuff anymore. Not as much as I used to, but in high school, you can ask anybody. That was like my number one important thing besides boys and girls. Um, was was having the perfect makeup and the perfect hair, like I was kind of known for it, and the perfect style and the perfect, I don't know, it was, I don't know. Luckily, I'm not like that anymore. I don't really care anymore, to be honest, so. Another thing for me is that if food was expired at all, so like if we have a gallon of milk in the fridge and, it's, and it expired that day, even if I smell it and smell that it's fine, I would not drink it. I would throw it away immediately, even if it smelled fine. And I would do the same thing if something was open. So like, if we open a chip bag, and if it was lo open longer than one day, I would throw it away. Like, so wasteful, so crazy. I just was so paranoid that I don't know if like bugs were gonna get in it or staleness or, I mean, I do kind of have like, super senses, like I can taste things that most people can't, but maybe that had something to do with it, I don't know. But food was very particular for me, and if it expired even even the same day, even if it felt and smelt and looked fine, I would throw it away. Okay, now I'm gonna show you the video of my friend. I'm gonna have to film it tomorrow, because she wouldn't send it to me tonight, but I'm gonna insert the clip here and then come back and I'll talk to you some more. Okay, Shani here in editing, ignore my paleness, I'm not feeling so well, what else is new? I'm just gonna insert here the video that Darcy did for a Snapchat series, I think it's a series, maybe just a season, um, called, what's it called? It's called Mind Yourself and Discover, and she is episode nine, and we're gonna watch it together because her episode was about OCD, so here we go. By the way, I've seen this once when it came out a long time ago, not a long time ago, in March it came out, um, but I have a terrible memory, so <laughs> I'm really sorry if like I'm reacting as if it's the first time. I just have the a horrible memory. So anyway, here we go. The way that we would all think a sewer is disgusting was the way I felt about someone touching me or touching anything I owned. I wasn't functioning, I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't eating, I wasn't myself. I needed to be somewhere 24-7 where they could help me all the time. Mm -hmm. Isn't she beautiful? Come on. I'm Darcy. I'm 20 years old. I'm a junior in college, and I have OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder. 
I didn't really start developing OCD-like symptoms until my sophomore year of high school. I specifically remember being in this class and having to hold hands with people and thinking the types of germs that were on their hands. And I started to get really anxious. And I went and I like lathered my hands in Purell and I felt a lot better. She started taking her clothes around her fist before she would touch doorknobs. More and more parts of her life got affected. It was heartbreaking because she wasn't going to have any kind of life. The way that we would all think a sewer is disgusting was the way I felt about someone touching me or touching anything I owned. My mom confronted me about it because it was getting a little bit concerning. I had just turned 16. It was getting to a point where I wasn't functioning, I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't eating, I wasn't myself. I needed to be somewhere 24-7 where they could help me all the time. I went years into ago. the hospital. When I first arrived, I remember telling the person checking my bags that they couldn't touch my things. You had to touch them. And I sat there sobbing. It was very scary at first. We started so brave. down the road of dealing with the OCD. And she can be treated, but there's no assurance that there's not steps back. I didn't have a day where all of a sudden OCD is gone. It's still not gone. My OCD being very hyper-focused on food, it got to a point where I was only eating things that were pre-packaged. My friend Julia, she also has OCD, so she really understands what it's like. The first time I ate at restaurants, it was absolutely terrifying because I really just didn't think it would ever happen. If I ate something like pretzels, I would have to use a fork or a spoon to pick them up because then the pretzels would be contaminated. The treatment for OCD is exposure response prevention, and that is a form of therapy. Over time, you expose yourself to things that are scary. The first exposure I ever did when I was in the hospital was I ate a granola bar, knowing that I had touched it with a finger that could be contaminated. Nice. And now, that seems very easy to me. I love going out to eat now. It's actually one of my favorite things to do. A lot of people who go through exposure response prevention will say that they live an exposure lifestyle, which basically means that you're constantly exposing yourself to what you're afraid of. I'm going That's to cool. um, go to the swimming pool at my school to do an exposure where I touch the water. I've never seen you touch water ever. <laughs> I used to love swimming. I used to love going to the beach. I haven't been swimming in, I think, in about four or five years. I'm afraid of the idea that pools could be contaminated. It's something that I still really struggle with. I just completely avoid pools and oceans and lakes. Jumping into the deep end, that's something I'm not ready to do now, and that's okay. Would you come with me? Of course. Yeah, I'd be so proud of you. Yeah, I'm scared. Jumping in the deep end. <laughs> the pun was funny. I definitely feel a little bit anxious for her. I sort We're of in remember the this. locker room, and I'm not a fan. <laughs> I've done a lot of exposures for my OCD before, and I know the feeling of the anticipation, the anxiety that comes with doing something that makes you so afraid. It smells like pool. I don't like the smell of pool. I'm very anxious. <laughs> yeah. This is definitely one of her biggest fears. Even though this seems like a small step, just touching the water, I know it's a really big step for her. I'm pretty nervous. For exposures, we measure our anxiety from one to 10. One being like, I'm super relaxed, and 10 being panic attack. Right now, I'm probably like an eight. An eight feels like wanting to crawl out of my skin and not being able to focus on much besides my anxiety. I have no idea who has swam in here, how long they were in here, where they were before this. I don't know what kinds of germs are there, all to lead into the uncertainty. Yes, Queen. I'm really proud that I was able to do this, and I know that it's a big step in my recovery. I know that I have to continue to face those fears in order to live a life worth living. I don't want to erase the whole exposure I did by washing my hands. So even after this, my plan is to touch things I own. I actually took a cup of pool water. <laughs> my plan is to take it and, like, use it to put on things or keep yes. it for a little while so I can do further exposures with it. That's so cool. I'm so proud of her. I just imagine like how scary that was for her to do that for the first time. I know how terrifying these things can be. Embracing the uncertainty is really one of the hardest things anyone can do, especially when your whole life is surrounded around these obsessions, these intrusive thoughts and fears. If you or someone you know are struggling with OCD, please swipe up to get more information.
Just... Good job, Darcy. I'm so proud of you. Isn't she amazing? I love her so much. So that's Darcy. She's amazing. Love her to death. She's wonderful. She's a really good friend of mine and uh, she's very brave and I just love that she shared her story. Um, so I want to say that all of these things are gone. Um, I don't have obsessive compulsive disorder about 95% of this stuff. Sometimes it pops up here and there, but mostly I'm totally okay. I just had to start telling myself over and over every day, listen, it's not as bad as you think. Look at Danny. Look at how Danny can eat chips that have been open longer than a day and he's totally fine. He can drink milk that was expired yesterday and he's totally fine. Spiders have never bitten you or killed you before, so they're not gonna start now. Uh, bacteria is everywhere and, and you can't prevent it. You can't prevent it. No matter how many things I sanitize, you just can't. Like, the bacteria is, is such a hard thing. So, I mean, the only thing I'm still weird about with the bacteria is like if I have raw meat or raw eggs in my kitchen, like if any of that gets on the counter, I have to sanitize the counter, but I think that's normal, right? And then my hands as well. I think that's a normal thing because that's a lot of bacteria in those things. So anyway, and I will say that this whole pandemic quarantine situation has brought up some OCD thoughts of mine, but I've also been working overtime to cancel those thoughts and to focus on what needs to be focused on because none of us have time and energy to waste on that, especially right now in our world. I just want to say that if you're going through this and you feel like it's never going to end, it will end. I promise you, if you decide to work on it, you have to decide in your mind, okay, is it really worth, do I want to focus, do I want to freak out and focus on if the beef jerky bag is sanitized in my bed or do I want to focus on my husband for the one hour that he has to spend with me because of work? Um, do I want to like freak out about spiders and think that I'm going to be murdered constantly? Or do I just want to be like, you know, you know, these little spiders, they're just doing what they were made to do. They're just looking for food. They're not looking to hurt me. And like, just all of that. Like I just had to say things like that over and over. And it took a really long time. I know it's not that easy. It takes a really long time. And for some people it's way more severe than what I had. But for me, just know that like those little baby steps are what helped me to eventually get over it and to like experiment. So like experiment, not sanitizing the beef jerky bag in your bed and see what happens in a week. Did you get sick? No, it's so like experiment and just do little bits at a time and prove to yourself, prove to your OCD brain that it's not the way that your brain is telling you it is. All right, well, I hope this video helps somebody out there and um, let me know if, if you'd like me to talk more about it. And again, please open the conversations in the comments. That's what our community is for, to talk about these things and open up to each other and find other people who are struggling with the same things. So please, please do that below. I, I read all comments and I respond for the first little bit as well. I love you guys. I'll see you really soon for another video. And remember forever and always that you're beautiful. Remember forever and always that you're beautiful. And I am too. Thank you for watching. Bye.